I think the innovation that's been created during the pandemic has been absolutely fascinating and long may it continue. But I also think post-COVID there's going to be a new kind of not-for-profit where technology makes the money and the profits are all piled back into society. So a non-profit which doesn't have thousands of people and associated pension fund payments but actually just generates cash through doing good things and builds more good things as a consequence of generating that cash. Long may that continue. Prediction number one, uh, home working. Uh, in 12 months time, 30% of us will be working from home. It's all worked out rather well. You don't need to look at your empire. You can trust people to work from home. They don't need to commute. Uh, it's all gonna be good. So prediction number one, much more home working. So if it isn't oil, what next for power generation? Well, we're all gonna be working from home. So maybe we're gonna use the sun, we're gonna use the wind, we're gonna use waves. We live in an island. We have all the power we need. There's a thousand times more power hits the earth every day than we need. Let's do that. So will HS2 happen? Is it necessary to get to Manchester quicker? Or would it be better to invest all that money into renewable? Imagine how many windmills you could put across the North Sea if you didn't build HS2. So my prediction, a greener, better world in 12 months time. There are no pockets in a shroud. You can't take your money to the afterlife. So I wonder if post-COVID people will be less conspicuous in what they consume, whether spending £20,000 on a watch or £100,000 on a car might seem somewhat frivolous when you have experienced a pandemic which takes people at random. And there certainly seems to be a nicer world emerging as people applaud healthcare workers and other essential workers. So maybe we'll focus more on family and friends and less on the things that we own. If you're in the engineering industry, the aviation industry, you're in retail, you're in transport, even logistics to a certain extent, you're feeling a lot of pain during the pandemic and that will continue for many months afterwards. However, there are several companies doing exceptionally well. There's one named after a river in South America that delivers to many people over the world and they're doing fantastically well. Growing like Topsy, share prices rising, all the things that are good. But are they paying their dues? Is paying 2% taxation in the UK acceptable? No, it isn't. People need to stand up and say that is wrong. It is anti-competitive and not fair. If you're going to take advantage of society by selling them things, then pay your dues. I remember when social networking actually involved real people networking with each other socially. Do you think that might come back? Do you think we'll stop living pretend lives online and actually socialise with our neighbours? Uh, be pleased with the social interaction that happens face to face? I think we will. I think there'll be a kickback against social media. I've seen it written that before COVID-19, something like 10% of people shopped online. Well, now something like ooh, all of us are shopping online. It seems unlikely that High Street will return. So the clicks and bricks war looks like it's being won by clicks. That should make things better for us, uh, improve choice, reduce costs. But what of the high street? The high street perhaps will return to be more of a social place, a place where you can have a coffee and a beer, and there'll be less of the same kind of retailers that will all go online. One of the unintended consequences of COVID-19 is to reduce the amount of transport and therefore the amount of air pollution, some 20% reduction in CO2 emissions as a consequence. The human race over the last few hundred years has decimated populations of um, animals and wildlife all over the world. Some 700 species have been made extinct. That's unsustainable. It can't carry on. So what I'm hoping post-COVID-19 is we're going to take the environment a lot more seriously, particularly with regards to biodiversity. Perhaps we're starting to see the end of bear pit politics. If you put a politician in front of 30 eager journalists, they're going to try to crucify the politician. You don't really need to do that. They're mostly good people trying to do a good thing. Journalism should focus on unpicking the untruths, looking at the imposters, looking at the fraudsters, not trying to take people apart with arguments where politicians don't have all the answers. So COVID-19 has shown a, a smarter, better way of interviewing politicians because it has to happen one by 
by one because people aren't in the room. Long may that continue and journalism um, goes back to where it was, being investigative, not aggressive. Certainly seems as though there's going to be a new reality post-Covid. In the UK, governments reckon to be spending a billion pounds a day. We're going to need to get that back somehow. The economy will not bounce back. There's too many fundamental changes. So expect more taxation. And it's not wrong that the rich pay more. Uh, the rich only become rich because other people are poor. So we're going to have to have a taxation system that is representative, but actually allows us to pay back what we had to do over Covid and doesn't place the burden on future generations. It's easy with hindsight to say that we saw this coming, but uh, a pandemic such as COVID-19 has been a surprise to most people on earth. I think governments need to address the way they spend money in a precautionary principle sense. It seems much more sensible to me to, for governments to work on cures for humanity as a whole rather than that sit inside the private sector. So things like future antibiotics, things like vaccines for future viruses, should that not be the work of government rather than the work of profit-making organisations? So here's hoping that governments all over the world will collaborate to create cures that affect an impact on all of us, just not on the few that can afford the cures. It's an undeniable truth that COVID-19, like SARS and MERS before, was transmitted from animals, almost certainly. I think the world's going to need to approach vegetarianism and veganism in a much more radical way. It takes about 10 kilos of grain to produce one kilo of beef. So you can support roughly 10 times as many people, calorie-wise, who aren't eating meat if they eat more vegetables. And veganism is simply a healthier choice. In in the UK, statistics indicate that a third of COVID-19 deaths have occurred because of obesity related to diabetes. We've got to get fitter, we've got to consume less animal protein and more vegetable protein. If we do that, the world will be a better place and we will all live longer.